सो वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द न्यू चैप्टर कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट सो वॉट डू यू मीन बाई कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग यस फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इट्स अ फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट इट्स पार्ट ऑफ फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट एक्चुअली पार्ट ऑफ फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट नॉट फुल स्टेट ओके इट्स अ पार्ट ऑफ फिनेंशियल स्टेटमेंट दट समराइज द अमाउंट ऑफ कैश इट समराइज अमाउंट ऑफ कैश एंड कैश इक्वलेंट वॉट डू यू मीन बाई कैश इक्वलेंट आई विल एक्सप्लेन लेटर लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द मीनिंग फर्स्ट इट्स इट समराइज अमाउंट ऑफ कैश एंड कैश इक्वलेंट फाइन एंटरिंग एंड लिविंग अ कंपनी Entering and leaving a company. What do you mean by that? So, let's say you are having a business. Fine, you are having a business of, let's say, manufacturing of furniture. Right, fine. You are purchasing some raw material or furniture for ten lakh rupees. You are purchasing furniture for ten lakh rupees. So, will they give free of cost? Absolutely no. You should pay for that. You should pay for that through cash. You are gonna pay, right? Here, from business, from business, cash is going out, right? Going out. Fine. Then, furniture is coming in. Absolutely. Yes, cash is going out. Outflow of cash is there. Fine. Then, if you sell that furniture, if you sell that furniture, cash will come back in a uh, with a profit. Right. Inflow of cash is there. These inflows and outflows, whatever happening in the business, will be recorded in the. cash flow statement that's why we use cash flow statement in the financial statement and it's a part of financial statement yes the next statement showing flow of cash statement showing it's a statement showing flow of cash what do you mean by flow flow means inflow and outflow i said there yes inflow means receipt you get money outflow means payment you pay to the whomever it may be you pay with them right next 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 in your puc first puc you may have learned cash book right what do you mean by cash book why we use that in the cash book whatever payments we have made and whatever receipts we get we will record in the cash book fine here on the debit side we will record debit side we will record receipts and payment side we will record payments no sorry credit side we will record payments fine the same the same we are going to do in a second pu in the form of cash flow statement but why not cash book why cash flow statement what is the difference difference we will see in the later but understand it the cash book the cash book provides day to day day to day details of inflow and outflow means we will record daily or monthly basis whatever it may be frequently we will record the transaction whatever transaction taking place in the business related to cash we will record in the cash book in a day to day basis or in a frequent fine but what cash flow gives cash flow gives summary of summary of cash book sorry let me write clearly it gives summary of cash book what do you mean sir what do you mean it means let's say let's say you will pay salary to your employee of rupees 10000 each month each month in the cash book in the cash book 
what we will do in the cash book what we will do if you make payment we will record that let's say one four in the first of april you are paying 10k and in the first of uh, may you are paying salary 10k like this every month we will record the transaction but 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 in the cash flow statement cash flow cfs cash flow statement straight away salary paid salary paid 10000 into 12 months it is 120000 we will record for the whole year at once it means we are summarizing the cash book we are summarizing the cash book if anyone if anyone wants to see your cash book they will easily easily understand your outflow and inflow of cash fine did you understand this if you want you can take not want you should take down these points let us go for the difference between cash flow statement and cash book so let us see the difference between cash book and cash flow statement cfs means cash flow statement the first difference the first difference is prepared on day to day basis cash book is prepared on day to day basis but cash flow statement prepared for a particular year it is prepared for a particular year fine the second difference is cash or bank balance on day to day basis cash book provides details of cash or bank balance on a day to day basis but cash flow statement gives a summary of cash book for a whole year for a whole year then the third difference it's not part of financial statement cash book is not part of financial statement but but cash flow statement is the part of financial statement and it is a very important part to the financial statement and your mca portal mcea ministry of corporate affairs says that it is mandatory for a listed company whom mandatory for listed companies fine this is your difference between cash flow and cash book okay fine we have we have two methods we have two methods to prepare your cash flow statement how many methods two methods the first method is direct method it's very easy method you can understand quickly by doing a question then indirect method little tricky little tricky but you can understand understand easily no problem with it but little tricky you should use your brain that's it let us see the format of cash flow statement let us see the format of cash flow statement the first we will see indirect method format direct method format is very easy you can do that we will go for the indirect method and direct method we will see in the question directly right indirect method format so first first what we will do whatever payment we are receiving or whatever payment sorry yeah whatever payment we are making right whatever payment we are receiving and whatever payment we are making we will divide those transaction in three activities in three activities what are those activities the first activity is cash from operating activity and second one cash from investing activity and third one cash from financing activity like this we will categorize the receipts and payments 
let us understand what these activity means fine fine cash from operating activity operating activity means what do you mean by operating activity means let us say let us say you are having a business you are having a business okay in this in that business you must purchase something or you should sell something right you should pay salary to your employees and it may be wages so these activity this activity is related straight to your business straight to your business it may be purchase sale these are straight to your business right then the second thing cash from investing activity investing activities means let's say you may have purchased uh, you might have purchased equity share of another company or debenture of another company or you may give loan to the others loan to others so like this like this it will be called investing activity whatever interest is received is also called investing activity fine the next one the next one cash from financing activity cash from financing activity means means it's nothing but just a second it's nothing but a rising fund you need fund for your business is that right obviously yes you need investments you need funds what you will do what you will do you may approach banks or you may issue shares or debentures through those you can raise funds what we are doing we are raising funds finance right so these will be categorized in the financing activity whatever interest you gonna pay for those loans that will also be considered as financing activity and the next thing net cash flow during the year means a plus b plus c will be net cash flow then we will add we will add opening cash and cash equivalent let me explain cash equivalent little more later a little later but if you add ca opening cash and cash equivalent to net cash flow during the year it should be equal it should be equal to closing cash and cash equivalent closing cash and cash equivalent first let us see one by one but before this format going through this format we should understand little more things little more things first first you note down this first you write it down the format let's discuss in deep what we can understand let's see yes did we note it down let's dive into cash flow statement okay okay i have erased some part of your format to take an example for better understanding the cash flow statement chapter right fine let us take an example you you and your friend mr a sorry mr a and mr b you and your friend your name is mr a and your friend name is mr b what you will do both you started a banking institution or banking business you started a bank and your friend started a manufacturing of furniture manufacturing of furniture fine you started 
bank and your friends started manufacturing of furniture so what is the main activity what is the main activity of bank it is lending accepting deposit right it is the main work of the bank so okay what is the main activity of furniture manufacturer of furniture selling furniture and purchasing furniture right selling furniture purchasing furniture in your business in bank lending is the main activity and for lending you will receive interest you will receive interest yes is that correct yes if it is main activity of your business it will come under operating activity your bank business as its main activity is lending right and earning interest whatever interest earned it will be also called as operating activity and lending also called as operating activity so accepting deposit it is also a main activity of the business right if it accepts the deposit it can lend the money if it accepts a deposit it can lend the money if bank accepts the deposit it should pay the interest it should pay the interest the interest whatever it pays it is also called as operating activity and accepting deposit is also operating activity fine sir then here in the manufacturing business in the manufacturing business selling furniture and purchasing furniture is the main activity is that right then what it will be called will be called operating activity right it will be called operating activity fine sir what are you trying to explain us what are you trying to explain us understand here here concepts starts right if 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 the bank purchases furniture let's say you should you need a furniture like sofas and um, computer tables like this furniture you may need in the bank right you purchased you purchased from the uh, from your friend right you have purchased the furniture is that is that main activity of your business is that main activity of of your business obviously no it's not your activity what you are purchasing you are purchasing fixed asset you are purchasing fixed asset that means you are investing in investing in fixed asset is that right yes obviously you are investing in fixed assets so where it will consider where it will be considered in the financial statement it will be considered in the investing activity investing activity similarly similarly if 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 your friend issues shares issues share capital if you purchase that if you purchase that it will be also called investing activity is that right and 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 if the furniture company whatever your friend having manufacturing company if he sells if he sells furniture to you if he sells furniture to you what it is for him what activity it is it is is this is the main activity of his business it is the main activity of his business then it will be operating activity for him but for banking for banking institutions it is investing activity for the same 
manufacturing company it will be a operating activity it is the main business for the manufacturing of furniture company right and then and then if he issues if he issues share if he issues share if you purchase as a bank it will be investing activity but if he issues as a company if he issues as a company it will be his financing activity right is raising the fund actually it will be called as financing activity did you understand the whole story of cash flow statement yes obviously how to categorize it and on the what basis we should keep it in mind that what business the client is involved in right according to that we are going to categorize these but in your questions not in not these kind of uh, detailing will be there but for the conceptual purpose i have explained that yes then what else that's it you can take down if you understand my handwriting you can take down that this example also fine let us start before understanding the cash flow statements formats let us understand trading pnl and pnl appropriation and balance sheet through this through this we can easily understand the format of the cash flow statement let us read the question which is on the board yes on 14 2020 x limited commenced means it is incorporating on 14 2020 fine issued they are issuing the equity share of rupees 20 lakh fine and debenture 12% debentures of rupees 10 lakh they are issuing or they are doing raising funds fine purchased and then they are purchasing machinery worth rupees 4 lakh and a building for 7 lakh next they are cash purchase that is um, if they are into furniture business they are purchasing the furniture through cash like that then they are paying salary paying salary to their employees of rupees 70000 then for their business advertisement they are spending rupees 50000 fine they are paying freight 10000 and they made a sales of rupees 12 lakh 80000 fine prepare trading pnl and balance sheet and then they are given additional informations what they are let us read that depreciation 10% on machinery whatever the machinery they have purchased right for that they are charging depreciation fine dividend 10% okay provision for tax rupees 50000 transfer 50000 to general reserve fine 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 first equity share capital they are raising the fund through equity and through debentures debentures are let me write in red where is it yeah let me write it in red debentures are debt you know it already still i am explaining then they have purchased a machinery for that for that depreciation they are charging 10% depreciation means reduction in the value of asset reduction in the value of asset charging 10% per annum fine building 7 lakh fine purchase explained they are paying the salary advertisement freight sales prepare training and okay depreciation fine what is dividend what is dividend they are issuing equity share right equity share if someone if someone 
purchases equity share they will become owner of the company they will become owner of the company for that portion of amount let's say they have issued 20 lakh uh, worth of equity share if someone purchases 20 lakh equity shares they will become owner for that 20000 equity shares fine if they are owner we should pay the profit we should pay the profit the profit is called dividend fine yes on equity share fine provision for tax what do you mean by provision for tax provision for tax means we are keeping aside keeping aside some amount of profit some amount of profit for the payment of tax for the payment of tax right we don't know how much tax is but we are reserving we are reserving for the payment of tax we are estimating the tax amount fine the reserved the reserved amount is called a provision for tax okay fine but one more thing we are not yet paid the tax is not yet paid fine 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 transfer 50000 to general reserve we are transferring the some amount to reserves right shall we do shall we solve this this my here okay fine 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 let us start with the first one issued equity share of rupees 20 lakh equity share of rupees 20 lakh if if we raise funds from the public or we take loan from the public whatever it may be it will be represented in the balance sheet why it is our liability so we will record it in the balance sheet right equity share capital how much it is 20 lakh then debenture debenture is our debt and it is also our liability sorry 10 lakh rupees fine sir fine sir but 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 they are paying dividend they are paying dividend where will it go where will it go it will go to the profit and loss appropriation it will go to the profit and loss appropriation what is profit and loss appropriation means why we will create sorry why we will create profit and loss appropriation because because we are sharing the profits we are dividing the profit so for division of profit purpose we are creating PNL appropriation account dividend on equity share ten percent of twenty lakh dividend how much it comes out two lakh rupees is that correct is that correct yes this adjustment is done 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 next next they should pay 12% this is coupon rate through which we can calculate the interest rate 12% interest on debentures whatever the public purchased or invested on debentures we should pay them interest we should pay them interest of 12% how much it comes out 10 lakh into 12% 10 lakh into 12% where my calci went 12% on 10 lakh into 12% it comes out 1 lakh 20,000 it comes out 1 lakh 20,000 where will it go it is our debt it is our whatever interest we are paying it will be our expense because we are not sharing the profit we are not sharing the profit instead we are 
paying the interest if we take any bank loan we will pay the interest rate same kind of interest we are paying in the debenture fine it will go to the debit side of p and l account what it is interest on debenture right interest on debenture interest on debentures 1 lakh 20 thousand that got finished this one this one is done next purchased machinery of rupees 4 lakh purchased machinery of rupees 4 lakh fine it is an asset directly go to the balance sheet asset side machinery how much it is 4 lakh 4 lakh why i am writing it in in a column because we have depreciation depreciation at 10 percent on machinery minus depreciation because it is the reduction in the value of asset 10 percent how much comes 40,000 right remaining 3,60,000 go to outer column goes to outer column fine sir the depreciation the depreciation whatever we have charged it will be our expenses so we will show it in the p and l account depreciation 40 000. right fine 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 next we are purchasing a building how much it is for 7 lakh right for 7 lakh fine okay next next cash purchase cash purchase 2 lakh 80 thousand where will it go to the trading account what do you mean by trading account on what are the transaction takes place in the trading account in the trading account we record we record the expenses which are directly attributable to the business it is connected to the business what and all uh, expenses comes under trading account what and all expenses comes under trading account in trading account we will record we will record any expenses any expenses which are directly related to the manufacturing of the product directly related to the manufacturing of the product let's say purchase is that related to the manufacturing of the product straightly yes obviously sales also and your factory expenses without factory you cannot manufacture the product right then 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 direct expenses like wages wages to whom we will pay for the factory employees factory employees let me write factory employees and salary will be paid to the office employees if we pay any expenses for the office employees let us say salary you may pay bonus you may pay it will go to the p and l account p and l account because it is not directly related to the manufacturing of the product fine then selling and distribution expenses office and administration expenses goes to the p and l account in the trading account we we'll record purchase direct expenses and sales closing stock opening stock and some more wages you can take factory rent factory related expenses all comes in trading account because it is related to manufacturing of the product fine and then we have cash purchase cash purchase right two lakh eighty thousand fine salary paid seventy thousand salary paid means if it is a wages it will go to the trading account because it is a salary because it is salary it will go to the p and l account general reserve all right okay salary how much it is 
salary how much they have paid oh, where it went yes 70000 fine fine the next entry sorry next advertisement expenses next expenses advertisement expenses is that directly related to the manufacturing of the product no it is related to the selling part it is related to the selling part so it will come under p and l account advertisement how much it is 50000 i am writing in short forms you should not write it in short forms then freight we have 10000 then what else what else prepare trading p and l account find sales how much it is 12 lakh 80000 then okay depreciation is done dividend is done a provision for tax provision for tax comes under comes under p and l account Fifty thousand. Okay, okay. Did we pay? Not, not yet paid. Not yet paid. Right. If it is expense and it's not paid, it's creating a liability. It's creating a liability. So we will record it in the liability side of balance sheet. Provision for tax. How much? Fifty thousand. Right. Fine. Then, then, then transfer fifty thousand to general reserve. Where it will go? Where it will go? It will go to the P and L appropriation. General reserve fifty thousand. Right. Fifty thousand. Right. Yes. Fifty thousand. And and and. Is that? Is that? the general reserve is that the general reserve is the expense no it's the reserve it's a reserve we will show it in the pnl appropriation and reserves and surplus will be shown in the balance sheet will be shown in the balance sheet general reserve 50000 is that visible to you yes come on next 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 anything else we have 50000 freight is done 70000 building yes depreciation also done that okay fine shall we finalize it shall finalize it yes what comes here gross profit gross profit let me write completely in full form gross profit is 10 lakh is 10 lakh 12 lakh 80000 minus 2 lakh 80000 comes out 10 lakh and and the pro, sorry the gross profit whatever it is they will be carried down gross profit in the pnl account how much 10 lakh fine okay from 10 lakh we should minus we should minus these expenses we should minus these expenses how much it comes out 10 lakh right minus 1 lakh 20000 fine 40000 Fine, seventy thousand. Okay, fifty thousand, ten thousand, and fifty thousand. It comes out net profit. Net profit six lakhs sixty thousand. Six lakhs sixty thousand. It is balancing figure, right? Six lakhs. Sixty thousand and whatever net profit is there will be carried forward to the prop profit and loss appropriation account. Sixty 
सिक्स लैख सिक्सटी थाउजेंड फाइन सिक्स लैक्स माइनस टू लैख इज दैट यस देन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड फोर लैख टेन थाउजेंड इज द बैलेंसिंग फिगर विच इज प्रॉफिट ट्रांसफर्ड प्रॉफिट टी एफ मीन्स ट्रांसफर्ड टू बी एस मीन्स बैलेंस शीट ट्रांसफर्ड टू बैलेंस शीट प्रॉफिट फोर लैख टेन थाउजेंड फोर लैख टेन थाउजेंड इट विल बी मैचिंग इट विल बी मैचिंग Let us check. Three lakh sixty thousand. It will not match. One second. Three lakh sixty thousand. Seven lakh. Ten lakh sixty thousand is the total of this side. Ten point six lakhs. Fine. Fine. Twenty lakh. Thirty lakh. Thirty lakh. Fifty. Thirty one lakh. Thirty five lakh. Ten thousand. Is that correct? Thirty lakh plus fifty thousand plus fifty thousand four lakh ten thousand comes out thirty five lakh ten thousand thirty five lakh ten thousand out of the thirty five lakh ten thousand we will minus ten lakh sixty thousand right yes ten lakh. Sixty thousand. It comes out twenty four lakh fifty thousand. Twenty four lakh fifty thousand. What it is? What it is? It is cash balance. It is cash balance. Twenty four lakh fifty thousand is the remaining cash we have in the business. Right. You can take it down. This got completed, and let us understand the format. Of cash flow statement through this. Take down. Okay. Let us understand the indirect method of cash flow statement. Okay. Let me write it. Cash flow statement indirect method. Indirect method. Let me write fully. indirect method in the indirect method in the indirect method we will we will first start with the net profit we will start with the net profit right not space is not enough but what we can do we will understand the operating activity we will understand the operating activity then i will erase everything and we will do remaining investing and financial activity they they both are very easy but operating activity is a little tricky one little tricky one fine yes let us start cash from operating activity okay fine fine we should start with a net profit right okay net profit net profit is how much it is 4 lakh 10000 is a net profit can check in the balance sheet also 4 lakh 10000 4 lakh 10000 all right it in oh i have extra no need this if fine 4 lakh 10000 net profit is there fine in the net profit in the net profit first 
what we should add what we should minus we will learn here let's see purchases is that operating activities related expense yes absolutely and is that uh, cash expense yes is that involved cash transaction yes obviously sales also operating only then 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 here interest on debenture whatever we have minus we have minus everything in this through this profit where through this sales we have minus these expenses and we got uh, profit before sorry profit net profit right in that 4 lakh 10 thousand in that 4 lakh 10 thousand we have minus interest on debenture interest on debenture is that operating activity is that operating activity absolutely no it is not operating activity it is financing activity financial activity it is financial activity what we will do we have minus the profit let's say 4 lakh 10 thousand it is some amount it was but we have minus interest on debenture 1 lakh 20 thousand after minusing that we got 4 lakh 10 thousand right we got 4 lakh 10 thousand what we should do what we should do because of that our profits getting low is that correct because of this expense our profit is getting low what we should do we should add back it we should add back it to arrive at correct operating profit right we will add back how much 1 lakh 20,000 interest on debenture interest on debentures 1 lakh 20,000 fine we have added it the next one the next one in the PNL account is depreciation is that related to the operating yes it is related to the operating fine but is there any is there any cash loss is here through depreciation no we don't have any cash transaction or cash depreciation in the business or appreciate whatever cash transaction is not there fine what we will do this what we will do this we will add it back because it reduces our profit because it is reducing our profit so we will add back to arrive at operating profits right then depreciation 40,000 is that correct 40 or 50 yes sorry 40,000 next salary salary paid is that operating expenses yes it is operating expenses it and it got minus in the profit sorry revenue fine advertisement is that operating yes it is operating activity freight also operating activity provision for tax provision for tax is that operating no is there any cash transaction did we paid it no if we didn't pay it there is no cash transaction here and it is not related to related to our operating activity is that correct provision for tax add it back fine fine next gross profit nothing is there next dividend dividend we have paid we have paid dividend is that operating activity no it's not operating activity it is financing activity because we have raised raised fund from the public and we should pay them the profit so is that operating no it's financing we should add it back we should add it back 20,000 20 sorry 2 lakh rupees not 20,000 dividend 2 lakh rupees yes fine 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 general reserve general reserve is there any cash transaction involved 
absolutely no we are transferring the our profit to general reserve there is no cash involved in it which is reducing our profit general reserve we will add it fine yes 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 is there any other things fine Net profit is four lakh ten thousand. Add, 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 add. Everything getting added. Four lakh ten thousand plus one lakh twenty thousand, forty thousand, two lakh fifty thousand, eight lakh twenty thousand. Somewhere it is missing. Uh, provision for tax. We missed it. Yes. Fifty thousand. We need to write the amount. Yes, eight lakh seventy thousand. Eight lakh seventeen thousand cash from operating activity. Then we will see the investing activity. Investing activity. Cash from investing activity. Finance investing activity. What we will show? What we will show? Is there any investments? Yes. Is there any investments? Yes. On fixed assets we have invested. On fixed assets we have invested machinery. How much we have paid? How much we have paid? Four lakh rupees. Then on building, seven lakh we have paid. Cash is going out from the cash is going out from the business. Is it expense? Yes, absolutely. It's expense. If cash is going out of the business, we will minus. If cash is coming into the business, we will add it. Fine. Investing activity is done. Next, financing activity. Shall I erase trading and P&L account? Shall I erase it? Because there's no space. Anyhow, we have gross profit there. No problem. Okay. Cash from cash from finance activity financial activity in financial activity what comes first we have interest on debenture interest on debenture the main is equity share capital is that financing activity equity share Capital obviously. How much? Twenty lakh. How much? Twenty lakh. Then next debenture we have. A debenture. How much it is? Ten lakh rupees. For for equity and debenture we have paid dividend and interest. It is also financing activity. It is also financing activity, right? One lakh twenty thousand. Interest. On debenture, one lakh twenty thousand, and we have paid dividend. How much we have paid a dividend? Two lakh rupees. We have paid two lakh. We have paid. Is there any other financing financial activity? There's no financial activity. Let us calculate. Let us calculate. Shall I erase P and L account? Because less space is there. Anyhow, we are finished. Okay. Okay. Next, what we will do? 
have net cash flow that is a plus b plus c yes fine we are paying interest it will be in the minus because it's our expense let's calculate 8 lakh 70 thousand right 8 lakh 70 thousand minus 11 lakh these both are 11 lakh how much it comes out minus 2 lakh 30 thousand and we raised uh, through equity and debentures 30 lakhs we should add it because cash is coming in and we should minus 1 lakh 20 thousand cash is going out okay minus 2 lakh how much net cash flow this 2 lakh sorry 24 lakh 50 thousand again matching yes it's matching and uh, that opening cash and cash equivalent opening cash and cash equivalent nothing is given it should be if we add these both it should be equal to closing cash and cash equivalent what is cash equivalent what is cash equivalent I forgot explain that earlier now I will explain it may be your bank balance or let's say bank draft or check means quickly converting into cash whatever the asset it may be whatever it may be if we are converting quickly into cash it is cash equivalent and there is one more thing highly liquid investment highly liquid investment also considered as cash equivalent highly liquid investment means let's say let's say you are purchasing preference share of a any other company right it is redeemable it is redeemable within three months within three months it is called if it redeems within three months any investment it may be it may be equity it may be debentures whatever investment is there if it is convertible within three months as cash we can call it as highly liquid investment and highly liquid investment are called cash equivalent right as quickly as possible we can convert into cash that is called cash equivalent right did you understand this fine you can take it down solution let's find a play fine we all done with the cash flow statement indirect method is that right yes we have done with the indirect method let me make some space here yes so whatever whatever we presented in operating activity whatever the presentation was there in the operating activity it was actually a wrong 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 presentation in the operating activity fine what is the right right presentation first first whatever net profit in the format in the format uh, I have written that profit before tax profit before tax 
and extraordinary item. Is that right? Is that right? But, but, but. Now, in the solution, we took net profit only. Is that correct? We took straight away net profit, which is wrong. Means, how should we represent that? Let me explain. First, 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 we should take net profit. Net profit, how much it was? 4 lakh 10,000. 4 lakh 10,000 was the net profit which is which is in the balance sheet is that correct yes what they are saying profit before tax and extraordinary items extraordinary items profit before tax means we should add tax how much tax is there 50,000 Fine, then, then, what do you mean by extraordinary items? Extraordinary item means which is unexpected event, which is unexpected event, like uh, cash lost in fire or insurance received. These are not frequent in the business. These are not frequent in the business that, that that kind of items we call it as extraordinary items fine okay you understood what is extraordinary items but how we should calculate this profit so we added we added tax fine they said profit before tax and then and then we should add we should add dividend dividend whatever sorry whatever it was there in the profit and loss appropriation we should add that we should add that how much it was dividend how much we are paying two lakh rupees right two lakh fine okay then we have general reserve. General reserve. How much it was? General reserve. 50,000 it was. We should add it. How much it became? How much it became? 4 lakh 10,000. 4 lakh 60. 6 lakh 60. And 50,000. 6 lakh 60. 7 lakh 10,000. 7 lakh 10,000. 7 lakh 10 thousand okay it came out 7 lakh 10 thousand remaining and all will be same what is the remaining what is the we have interest on debenture and depreciation how much it is? 1,20,000. 1 lakh 20,000. And depreciation. Depreciation is 40,000. That is 10% of 4 lakh. 4 lakh into 10%. Right. 40,000. It comes out 8 lakh, 8 lakh 70,000. The same. The same amount cash from operating activity total cash from operating activity right okay fine fine we call it as a and this is b we should total it and write it and this is c right okay fine 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 shall we move on to indirect sorry direct method shall we do the direct method 
what is the difference what is the difference between direct and indirect method and practically there is only one difference method of calculating the operating activity cash from operating activity remaining cash from investing activity and cash from financial activity will be same 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 as it is for the both things fine okay sir so let me see the question so straight away straight away in the direct method in the direct method whatever whatever operating activity is there we will take it directly like first 20 lakh equity equity shares it is financing activity we showed in the financing activity done 12 percent debenture straight away financing activity then 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 x limited purchase in a machine investing activity okay building investing activity then during the year following transaction took place cash purchase is that operating activity yes it is operating activity cash purchase how much it is two lakh eighty thousand let me write it in the in the column two lakh eighty thousand fine salary paid is that operating activity yes How much it is? 70,000, right? Okay. Advertisement. Advertisement. Rupees 50,000. Then, fright. How much? 10,000. These are all expenses, right? We'll keep it in the negative then 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 goods sold for 2 lakh sorry 12 lakh 80 thousand sales it is 12 lakh 80 thousand in the positive because we are receiving the money out of 12 lakh 80 thousand what was the expenses 2 lakh 80 70 thousand 50 thousand 10,000 it comes out to be the same 8 lakh 70 thousand no changes are there 8 lakh 70 thousand total cash from operating activity you already know that we are considering it as A and B C three activities A B C got finished fine fine yes your direct method got completed you can take down the solution right in the format in the format we have seen that you have seen that it was written increase in current liability decrease in current asset decrease in current liability increase in current asset if current asset sorry if current liability increases we will add it if current asset decreases if current asset decreases we will add it decrease in a current liability if current liability decreases we will minus it and increase in current asset if current asset increases we will minus it fine what it means why we should minus it so let us understand it conceptually increase in current liability let's say current liability creditors and bills payable right we take two examples creditors and bills payable let's say let's say creditors in the 2016 and 2017 
creditors in the 2016 there was rupees for rupees 10000 and in 2017 was 15000 and bills payable bills payable was let's say again 10000 but in the 2017 it was 8000 right we took both the examples increase in current liability increase in current liability in the 2016 it was 10000 and 2017 it increased to 5000 and decrease in current liability decrease in current liability two cases at one shot we will understand it better so think why current liability if it increases we will add or and bills payable if it decreases the current liability we will minus if current liability decreases we will minus why what is the reason behind it let's say mr a mr a that is you your friend mr b right is having some business he is having some business creditors are those creditors are those to whom we should pay money is that correct to whom we should pay money let's say you purchased a furniture on credit fine on credit you have purchased fine sir but did you pay did you pay no let's say for 10000 itself you purchased right here in the 2016 10000 is there you have purchased for 10000 and 2017 it become 15000 fine why we should add that we will understand right if if you didn't pay the money if you didn't pay the money the amount the cash is with you right is that correct let us understand clearly in the trading account in the trading account we show purchase on debit side it includes cash purchase and credit purchase is that correct the uh, purchase includes cash purchase and credit purchase also let's say cash purchase is 20000 credit purchase is 10000 right okay it, at the end uh, we sold some for 40000 let's say we are whatever we have generated revenue whatever we have generated revenue from that revenue we are reducing credit purchase also for which we didn't paid yet we didn't paid yet if we minus this the our revenue becomes sorry 40000 minus 10000 if we do that our revenue goes down correct if our revenue goes down profit also going down profit also going down but still we didn't pay we have cash in the account we have cash in the account if we minus here what we should do what we should do to arrive at correct profit to arrive at correct revenue or profit we should add it back we should add it back is that correct yes in the 30 whatever result is there plus 10 if we add we will arrive at this amount which is correct amount did you understand did you understand yes sir where it went yes here also here also who are creditors creditors are those persons to whom we should pay money that's correct in the 2016 creditors to whom uh, whatever we want to pay that is rupees 10000 but 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 
in 2017 it became 15,000 if nothing specified in question if nothing specified in question we assume that 10,000 in 2016 from 10,000 it became 5,000 that is 5,000 addition that's it 5,000 in the 2017 creditors is 5,000 correct yes if nothing specified in the question we assume this if specified act according to that fine okay if in 2016 it was 10,000 and in 2017 it became 5,000 means again we purchased something it means again we purchased some Per, some goods whatever we need we have purchased means the 5000 whatever we have purchased for that we didn't pay but we have cash in the account but we have cash in the account what we should do we should add it we should add it in the net profit we should add it in the net profit so that we can arrive at the correct profit right okay then bills payable bills payable why we should minus if it reduces if it reduces let's say in 2016 in 2016 our bills payable was 10,000 whatever we should pay to anyone it was rupees 10,000 and in 2017 it became 8,000 it became 8,000 it means we have paid we have paid rupees 2000 is that correct we have paid 2000 so that it became 8000 rupees if we pay cash is going out is that correct if cash goes out what we will call outflow of cash what we should do what we should do we should minus that amount did you understand yes fine let's go to the with the same amount we will discuss assets current assets current asset if decrease in current asset if decrease in current asset we will add if increased in current asset we will minus let's take current asset bills receivable and debtors two current assets we have taken two current assets we have taken and why it get minus and why it get plus we should understand it by concept debtors are those persons who should pay us who should pay us he will be our debtors let's say we have sold we have sold some goods worth rupees 10,000 worth rupees 10,000 to some customers okay on credit basis on credit basis he should pay us he is liable for us he becomes our asset debtors is that correct fine sir why we will add if decreased why we will minus if increased let's understand that sold you have sold rupees 10,000 on credit basis let's say on credit basis you have sold the amount sorry sold the goods to mr p mr p didn't pay yet is that correct is that correct but but we already shown it as sales we already shown it as sales it increased our profit it increased our revenue and profit also revenue and profit also if it increased but not yet received not yet received cash is they no there is no cash 
what we will do to bring a correct cash we will minus that amount minus that amount did you understand that let's see these cases bills receivable bills receivable in 2016 it was rupees 10000 it was rupees 10000 and it became 15000 in 2017 15000 in 2017 the 5000 increased but not yet received but not yet received we don't have cash of rupees 5000 but we have asset but don't have cash so what we will do we will minus fine debtors debtors it was in 2016 it was 10000 and in 2018 sorry 17 8000 rupees is that right if 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 it get reduced means we have received the cash we have received the cash from the debtors is that correct yes 2000 cash is received what we will do we will add it did you understand these terms yes sir let us go for the another question let us go for another question there you will understand it better yes the question two is on a board you can take down the question let us read the question first they have given purchases wages commission depreciation interest on debenture basically they have given p and l account right interest dividend broad sorry general reserve provision for tax balance transfer to balance sheet oh i didn't write the amount how much it is 14 lakh 35,000 14 lakh 35,000 this was the amount okay transfer to balance sheet fine it is profit only by sales sales it was 40 lakh and insurance claim we have received for 3 lakh rupees compute calculate cash from operating activity let us calculate that so cash from operating activity solution cash from operating activity fines what is the profit before tax and extraordinary item extraordinary item how much it is how much it is first we should calculate that tax sorry whatever uh, balance transfer to balance sheet profit is there and that is your net profit 14 lakh 35000 14 lakh 35000 in that what we will add provision for tax provision for tax how much it is 70,000 then general reserve 82,000 general reserve 82,000 how much it became 15 lakh 87 thousand 15 lakh 87 thousand yes profit before tax 15 lakh 87 thousand is that correct yes yes then 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 we should see what are the 
non operating income or expenses are there and non cash expenses right the first one is that related to related to operating yes wages is that related to operating yes commission commission paid whatever commission we pay for the sales or purchase is that related to operating yes depreciation that is cash non cash item and non operating item we will add back depreciation 15 lakh 87000 Fifteen lakh eighty-seven thousand. Okay, how much depreciation is there? Forty thousand. Okay, we added it. Next, next. Interest on debenture is that operating activity? Operating activity? No, it's not operating activity. Forty-five. interest on debenture yes we will show obviously in the financing activity but in the operating activity we will minus that next we have dividend treated there only general reserve done provision for tax that's also done balance transferred okay fine is that okay yes next 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 we have adjustment tax we have paid 60000 fine debtors debtors 1 lakh 50000 to 2 lakh debtors got increase if asset increase if asset increase what we will do we will minus that why why because 50000 whatever difference is there 50k we didn't still received the amount we don't have cash in the bank that's why we are minusing that debtors how much debtors 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 50000 right then outstanding sorry creditors creditors are there 60000 to 85000 creditors got increased creditors got increased what we will do means the 15000 whatever excess 15000 is there we didn't paid still we didn't paid still we have cash in the account we have cash in the account what we wish should do we should add it back we should add it back creditors how much 85000 fine 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 outstanding rent outstanding rent is 25000 outstanding rent is 25000 what we should do we should add because we didn't pay it yet so we will add it back because the cash is on account twenty five thousand total how much it becomes Fifteen lakh eighty-seven thousand plus forty thousand and plus forty-five thousand becomes sixteen lakh seventy-two thousand. Fine. From that, I should minus fifty thousand eighty-five thousand. Should then sorry, we should add eighty-five thousand. Right, we should add eighty-five thousand. Okay, twenty-five thousand. Right, seventeen lakh thirty-two thousand. Seventeen lakh thirty-two 
thousand. Then, 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 then we should minus whatever. Sorry, where it went? Tax paid. Tax paid amount. So in the previous question, we didn't told that because in the previous question we didn't pay the tax, but we created a provision to pay the tax. Now we have we have paid the tax sixty thousand tax paid. Tax paid sixty thousand in the outer column, and 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 insurance claim. Insurance claim we have received rupees three lakh. What we should do? Cash is coming in. Add insurance claim. How much? Three lakh. total cash from operating activity from operating activity let us calculate that 17 lakh 32000 17 lakh 32000 minus 60000 plus 3 lakh 1972 19 lakh 72000 Is that correct? Yes, sir. The question is done. You can take down. You can take down the solution.